Today, we're going to talk about the different types of cannabis seeds out there and how to pick the right ones for your next grow. But before we do, today's video is brought to you by Real Growers Recharge. If you want stronger, healthier plants, you got to check out Real Growers Recharge. Bigger roots for bigger fruits. Go check it out over at realgrowers.com. All right, come on. Let's get into it. You ready? I am, man. Okay, so... I came up under you, so I haven't really done a lot of seed popping, sure. seed shopping. But when I do look at the catalogs, there's a lot of stuff there, and it gets a little bit confusing. So help me out. Help me understand what the different types of seeds are out there, and depending on what type of grow I'm looking for, sure. which seeds I should be looking at. Absolutely. And I do have some seeds I'm going to pop, and I just uh, I got to get to it, all right? I'm a clone guy. I've got a, got a lineup over there. Okay, so help me out. I'm, I'm looking at some of these seed vaults, and I see a bunch of different seeds. The first one I see are called regs. What's regular seeds? What does that mean? That's just, just the way we do it, man. I'm, a male and a female make, uh, I make an offspring. You know, that's... Uh, uh, very simple. You've got male cannabis plants and female cannabis plants. Uh, the males make pollen that uh, pollinates the females. And then the seed that comes out, uh, yeah, that you get your choice of male. 50% will probably be male. 50% will be female. Uh, you'd have to throw out the male seeds and you would uh, uh, use the, the female seeds. So pretty simple. Okay, but I don't have to throw out the male seeds because you were saying some people actually want males when they're popping seeds. Yeah. Some growers throw out all the males. They're like, ah, oh, bummer, half of these were males. Right. But then you said some, some growers are actually looking for some male seeds. Why? Yeah, you don't need a license to be a breeder. You can just decide you want to be a breeder, get a pack of seeds, and that's how it always starts is you start playing around with them. You know, I got this male, and I'm going to breed it back with this female, and uh, you're off, you know, two hours on the internet, man, and, and you're done. You're a breeder. Okay, so if you're planning, <laughs> on, if you're planning on being a breeder, you're probably going to want some male seeds to pop. Yeah, and by the way, being a breeder, maybe you just don't want to buy seeds next year. Mm. Maybe you're like, hey, you know what? I don't mind. Uh, I'll take uh, one plant and seed it up, and then I'm going to have hundreds of seeds for next year. Okay, and you are talking about kind of – I don't know. Is pheno hunting? Is that what they do yeah. in this? So explain what that is, why I might want to go with just regular seeds. Sure. Just like, you know, we we'll use human beings. You got a mom and a dad. Uh, some of the kids are kind of going to come out and look just like the dad, you know, in favor of the dad. Some are going to look a lot like the mom. And then some are going to have traits, you know, between the both of them. And that's, you know, you're going to get uniqueness there. So if you've got, we'll say, you know, just for lack of a better, you know, a hundred seeds mm -hmm. and you, uh, uh, sprout all those and 50 of them were male. And, uh, so we, we discarded those. And in the other 50, we looked for traits. Some of them looked just like the dad. If that's what we want, we took those and cloned from them. Mm -hmm. If we got something really unique and cool that had great smells or whatever, then that would be the one that we would take. So we were just kind of selecting. We've got these, you know, 100 kids or 50 kids, whatever it is, and we're suggesting the one that we think is the nicest, and then we're going to clone that one. Okay, so I pop 10 seeds. I buy a 10-pack. They mm -hmm. all come from the same mom and dad, and some of them are going to be shorter. Some of them are going to be taller. Some of them are going to be stickier, yep. maybe vary in color or yield, and then I find one out of those 10 that I really like, Sure. and then I use that one to get cuts from and clone from, and I can keep that thing that I really liked from that one Absolutely, seed. and one might favor the dad. You might have five of them, and two of them might look just like the dad, and if you were looking for those characteristics, you would select those. Two of them might look just like the mom. So where if you're searching for those characteristics, you would would do that. Uh, if there was one and that was just had these unique traits, the best of both worlds, and that's what you were looking for, you would grab that one. You're on a hunt for your own uh, your own pheno for what, whatever's important to you. And, and then cool. to keep to keep that going, we switch from popping seeds and we switch over to cloning. Yes. All right. Next thing that I keep coming across is this abbreviation F1. What's F1 stand for? Yeah, filial one. And it, it just means two completely separate parents from with separate uh, uh, genetics. So, okay. uh, so I'm thinking like White Widow is a strain from Brazil and a strain from India mm -hmm. and combined together. So they're completely different. Those genetics have never crossed before. Uh, so when they 
do that makes this thing hybrid vigor. It just makes a super vigorous, disease-resistant, lively plant. And so mm. it's uh, very cool. F1s are cool. You're, they're supposed to be from completely like the uh, White Widow is Brazilian land race variety is what it is. Land race means it's not been polluted with any other genetics. Mm-hmm. It's pretty hard to do in cannabis now, so there's very few true F1s. Because everything's been mixed together. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, why would somebody though you said vigor what, what does that mean for as for me as a grower what's the benefit of a getting an f1 super strong healthy plant man something that's just uh uh, that's just bursting with energy and might have more vigor. The hybrid vigor thing, a lot of times, will be more vigorous than both the parents. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, now, the next thing that I saw was F2s and F3s. I'm assuming it's something along the same line. I'm not a breeder here, but F2 is just when you start breeding the kids. So now you've got either the kids breeding together, or I think you can also breed it back with the mom, which... It, Okay, so what happens, what you think would happen. You get a bunch of genetic freaks. You get a bunch of weird stuff happening. There's a lot of recessive genes that come out. Uh, That can be really bad, but every now and again, they call it the unicorn. It can be really cool. You can get a a freak or a unicorn, they call it in in the seed game, something that's really interesting. So that does happen, but F2s are, you know, more of a crapshoot. Okay. So unless you're looking just to kind of have fun and find something really interesting, I would stay away from the F2s. Stay oh. away from the F2s, rather. Banner also said that sometimes, like, if you've got a blonde mother and a brunette father and you like the blonde mother and you have the F1 mix from them and you find one of them that's also a blonde kid you can cross breed it or back breed it you back cross it yeah and then with you, the mother and you got a higher chance of having more blondes come yeah, from that that's that bx you, you might see that back cross is what okay. they're doing and that's just reducing the gene pool okay so so it looks like counterintuitively you can do the f2 thing to get a bunch of crazy surprises yep. Or you can do it to kind of narrow down on the specific thing that you want to duplicate. As it goes along, you might see F3, F4, F5, and then it'll say IBL, an inbred line. And that's when you get, uh, after the F2, the F3, F4, and F5s are more stable. You're ble- you're uh, pushing out all the genes. You're breeding out all the other genetics, and you're just breeding for super stability. Okay. So, so uh, as counterintuitive as it sounds, you can F2 and get crazy randomness, or you can F2, F3, F4, and start to hone in on the things with less randomness. F3, F4, F5, and IBL are all going to be super stable. If you see something that says IBL or F4 or F5, that is going to look like the picture. Super consistent. You're going to get what you're expecting. Right. All right, so the next one that I keep seeing is feminized seeds, and I don't want to get age gated on youtube but let's do our best to explain what feminized seeds are yeah well it's 2024 none of this should surprise you (laughs) but they have a chemical it's called silver thiosulfate and they figured out if they take a female cannabis plant or any female plant and they treat it with this silver thiosulfate it'll start making male parts and pollen it'll start making its own pollen pollen, okay okay? it stops being a female and becomes a uh, it starts making male pollen basically but it's still a female plant I don't know. That's uh, <laughs> that's a political answer, we, sir. We, right? let it, we let it choose that for itself. <laughs> yes. Okay. But the point is, so it makes this pollen. The cool thing about this pollen is because it was made from a female, it doesn't have any male chromosomes in it. Okay. So this pollen, when it pollinates anything, can only make female plants. Okay, so I learned this in science class. XY chromosomes from men, XX in women, and if... The offspring comes, it's the male that gives it the chance of being male or female. But if it's just female, it's just the XX, the only possibility is XX. Yes. Because there's no Y there. So it's the same kind of for plants. If it's pollen from a female plant. Right. On another female plant, it only has the possibility of creating seeds that will also create female. So all Correct. of those seeds will be Correct. feminized. Correct. It doesn't have, what would it be, the Y chromosome? It's mm-hmm. just not there. Okay. Seventh grade was the last time I took biology. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> so I get a pack of feminized seeds. 
I don't have to worry about throwing half of them out because they're males. Correct. Every single one's going to be a female. And also because it's uh, if it was crossed back with the mom itself, then you've got much less uh, g- uh, genetic diversity in there because you're crossing that thing back with itself. Which means consistency i'm gonna get what i'm yeah. expecting yeah well you're not looking for one like the mother and one like the father and some in between mm-hmm. you've got the same genetics as the mother and the father they should be pretty stable okay so feminized means uh all of the seeds are going to be fe- female i don't have to worry about throwing out half right. of what i popped and i'm going to get a pretty consistent all of the plants are going to be very similar to the mother i think that's safe to say okay the next and last one we're going to be covering is i keep hearing about these things called auto flower seeds yeah what, what's that where did that come from because that's not something i was familiar with growing up yeah no these are I say fairly new, but we've always heard about sativa and indica, right? Cannabis sativa, that's the genus and the species. Mm -hmm. Cannabis indica, indica is the species. We always thought there was only two, but there's three. There's this one that was discovered recently in Russia. I say recently, I don't know, a couple decades ago. Cannabis ruderalis. And it is this like ditch weed. It's literally just grows as like a ground cover, really short. And uh, but it, it is a cannabis. Plant. It is a cannabis, okay. but it's weird. Cannabis sativa and indica. We all know you have to have eighteen or twenty four hours of light, you know, to make them grow. And then you click the lights back to twelve hours on, twelve hours off, and that's the flowering period. They're short day plants. Mm-hmm. They require that photo. Period. Photo period. period, yeah. Photo period, okay. Uh, and uh, the ruderalis, the auto flowers, do not. It's just something that, that where they're at or where they were, were uh, developed, uh, they just don't need that, man. They will just flower up according to time. So after I think it's about... 30, 40, you know, right around 30, you know, it depends. But after the first month of growing, they'll start to just flower up. It doesn't doesn't matter what conditions they're in. Okay, so traditional cannabis plants wait for the shorter days. Mm-hmm. That triggers them into flowering. Sure. You're saying these ones don't wait for the shorter nope. sunlight period. They just automatically flower after a certain amount of time. Yeah, so it means as soon as you plant that seed and get that sprout, the clock is ticking. Mm-hmm. So if you mess up and don't give them enough light or, you know, stall them out for the first two, three weeks. Or they get good some luck. kind of stress problem. Yeah, good okay, luck. It's hard, good to luck. Co- it's hard to come back. But there's also a benefit because since they don't require the flipping of the lights or the switching of the lights right. to flip over, you were saying you could have... Uh, two two plants in photo, two plants in sure, in, or two plants in veg, two in v- bloom, in the same tent under the same lights. Yeah, you can have all sorts of stages going. You can have a two by four tent, and you can have maybe four or six smaller autos in there. Mm-hmm. You're putting one in every two weeks or so, and pulling one out every two weeks to have a small uh, tent and to be able to have a perpetual harvest just because you're planting a new seed every couple of weeks is pretty cool. So you don't have to worry about light bleed or anything like no, that or no. light leakage. You just just set them in there and you can constantly be perpetually harvesting almost. Yep. You can show your friends when you come home from the club at two in the morning. We'll see my <laughs> weed plants, man. All right. We do not advocate for that on this podcast. I, I, I will say that autos have gotten a really bum rap and that's because they started by taking those, uh, that little, whatever it was, that ditch weed and crossing it. And it took a lot of work until you got some decent autos out of it. So these people grew autos 10, 15 years ago. Ago, and they're like, oh, that was bunk, man. It wasn't nearly as good. I've got friends, shout out to Cortez the Conqueror or Daz over at Night Owl Genetics. These guys are making good, good quality autos, man. So, yeah, don't sleep on them. All right, so autos are improving then. Absolutely, they're good. And my buddy Cortez the Conqueror comes over and shows me great, great auto flower cannabis. I'm sure there's a ton more we can get into. I think this is enough to get you started. So out of the four types of seeds we've talked about today, which do you prefer and why? And if we miss something, please help us out and bring it up in the comments. And if you like this video, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and check out the other couple videos YouTube's recommended for you.